These are the 10 stages of Gorilla Tag players. This is the first stage in the beginning of all Gorilla Tag players. The discovery stage marks the beginning of whatever awful or great things are about to come. In this stage, the new player probably heard about Gorilla Tag from different YouTubers, or they probably heard it from their friends, if they have any. Loser! <laughs> They load up the game and see what it has to offer. They find out that the only way you can move in the game is with your arms, so no using the joystick. As the player finally figures out how to move around, they go and look around the map and look at the tall, intimidating branches that they have to climb. Some people might go back and delete the game instantly, but most will stay and move on to other stages. By the way, I'm rating all of these stages out of 5, and the stage with the highest score will get my personal monkey award. This stage is a 4.5 out of 5. Stage 2 is the learning stage. The player is willing to start trying to learn some new things and they also start putting in more hours into the game because they're starting to find it way more fun. First, players try learning different routes across the map and practice them a ton. Or maybe they learn how to do certain tricks like climb a wall vertically. Learning these things can take time and are a little bit difficult, so they might not get them at first, but don't get discouraged because eventually once you learn them, they're gonna be really fun. Most people at this stage are also very lonely, so they try to find new friends to play with. But I know some people across this screen don't have any friends. Also at this stage, player starts discovering new YouTubers like Jman Curly yep. Yep. and VMT, but I personally don't watch them often. For this stage, I will give it a 4 out of 5 because it's a good stage with no downsides really. However, this next stage is confusing and I'll tell you why. Stage 3 is a double-edged sword. The obsession stage is probably the worst and best stage for a gorilla tag player. This stage helps the player get better, but it gives them a chance to turn into the gorilla tag kid, which in my books is worse than being called anything else really. Also in this stage, the player goes from watching gorilla tag videos every so often to making it the only thing they watch every single day. I mean, who can blame them? It's now their favorite game of all time in the small pool of expensive quest 2 games. But this stage gets even worse because it can lead down to the player making gorilla tag their only personality and they're gonna start quoting j-man every single day seeing what hell looks like this stage is a 2 out of 10 because you have a high chance of being hated on in the community but after playing a game for a long time a unique stage will happen stage 4 marks the boredom stage after being obsessed with a game and playing it every day for hours, anybody can get bored. This happens because of two reasons. One is that you play this game for so long that you're so bored of it and there's no new content in the game. The second reason is because you just don't have a life. The only times this person will ever touch the game ever again is when there's a small new update to the game or one of their friends asks them to get on, assuming that they have people to talk to. Sometimes the player in this stage will be confused as to why other people can play Gorilla Tag and actually have fun and they just might start hating the game for no reason. This stage is a 1 out of 5. But Gorilla Tag players can only handle the sun for so long, so stage 5 becomes the comeback stage. The player finally picks up the game and enjoys it again, and they play the game less than they did before. But this doesn't stop them from enjoying the game any less than their stinky obsession stage. <laughs> There are many reasons why the player came back. The first reason is that there aren't many other quest games with the same amount of players as Gorilla Tag. Being lonely is one thing, but having absolutely nothing to play is even worse. Another reason the player came back is because Gorilla Tag is just easy to come back to and to pick up. You're literally a gorilla with arms running away from taggers. You have to be a different type of stupid to not understand the game. The final reason a player comes back to this questionable game is because of a really big update or a new map or something like that. 3 out of 5, this stage is definitely one of my least favorites. I don't hate it, but my favorite stage is coming later at the end of this video. Stage 6 is like the worst and best stage bro. This is the modding stage. After playing the base game for god knows how long, the player obviously wants to spice up their game and they discover the unknown world of modding. Now mods can either be the best thing in the world and improve your game or they can be the worst thing and absolutely ruin the game for everybody else and yourself. Mods are separated into two categories, legal mods and illegal mods. Legal mods are mods that don't give you competitive advantage, like a cosmetic mod that gives you a teddy bear on your right hand. But illegal mods are mods that give you a huge advantage, like flying, speed boosting around the map, or anything like that. I'm not entirely sure on what's legal, so if what I said was wrong, let me know in the comments down below. In terms of actually getting mods, PC players are very lucky in this case because downloading mods on PC is as easy as taking 
candy from a gorilla tag player. Quest 2 players will be out of luck because downloading mods on the quest is so tedious for no reason at all. I think I'd rather lick the floor clean than download mods on my quest. This stage is a 3 out of 5, but this next stage is one of my favorites, but not my absolute favorite. Stage 7 is the content creating stage. There are a lot of people in this stage and they end up being in this stage for forever. That's not a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing to be a content creator. Now, a lot of new content creators are a complete butt and I'd rather dress up as a clown and stick up pencils up my nose, but that doesn't mean content creating itself is actually bad. Making YouTube videos help you actually use your brain for once and makes you think of ways to engage the audience and making videos that people will like. That means doing different types of challenges, trying awful mods, or trying to become the best player in Gorilla Tag. Making content actually helps you enjoy the game more and I know for a fact if I wasn't making VR videos, I'd barely touch my quest too. Like I'd probably throw it away or something. This person also takes inspiration from other Gorilla Tag YouTubers and maybe even steals their ideas. This stage is a 5 out of 5, but this next stage, however, is a very interesting stage. After content creating, the next stage is to become a pro player. Not necessarily a pro player, but just a really good player who is better than 90% of the players. You can consider yourself in the top 1% of lose- <clears throat> I mean, Gorilla Tag players. Earlier, I mentioned that this stage is interesting, and here's why. Players in this stage can be separated into two categories. They are either super chilled and nice to the people around them, or they can be very annoying, very mean, and think they're better than everybody else, even their pet cat. If I were their parents, I would definitely whip them into shape. These players are good, but people will not like them because of their stinky attitude. This stage is a 3.5 out of 5. If you guys are enjoying this video so far, comment below if you want to see more Gorilla Tag videos. Stage 9 is a stage that I have personally gone through and have video evidence of. Please, please. <gasps> <gasps> This is a stage where the player starts playing different Gorilla Tag fan games. The Gorilla Tag physics code thingy is open source, so there are tons of Gorilla Tag fan games out there. We have low quality fan games, we have high quality fan games, and then there are horror ones as well, which I have personally played on myself. Ah! Where did you come from? And are up on my channel if you want to go see it. A lot of fan games are complete doo doo and I don't recommend, but some are actually fun, like this horror game that I played. I I promise you I'm legit never playing another horror game in VR again. I scream like a little girl, bro. It's embarrassing. 2 out of 5. Stage 10. The Senior. My favorite stage. But don't leave yet because I've got a bonus stage after this that a lot of us are guilty of. Being a senior means that you have a ton of playtime under your belt and you don't really brag about it. At this point, you're considered an OG and respected by a lot of players. That's if you don't have a stinky butt attitude. At this senior stage, the player teaches new players a ton of different skills and they love doing that. They're kind of like the old sensei off of cartoon shows. People in this stage don't play as much as they did in their obsession stage, but they do play a lot. That helps them stay better than 99% of the players in the game. Usually meeting these people online, they're really chill and they're a good addition to any community. This stage easily gets a 4.5 out of 10. Here's a bonus stage for you guys. This stage is the conspiracy theory stage. The player believes in all of the conspiracy theories to exist. First off, we have ghosts like Daisy09, PBBV, which sounds just like peanut butter and jelly to me, and other ridiculous ghost names that people made up in their sleep. People become obsessed with this and often look too much into these fake ghosts. Trust me, they aren't real, and I think all of this is ridiculous and fake. But who knows? Even I believed in Hero Brian at one point. Finally, it's time for the award, and the winner of this one is the content creation stage. Everybody clap, do whatever you want, but wait, before you leave, check out this video on quest 2 settings you must turn off some of these can actually save battery life